I just really can't tell much of a difference. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, good afternoon, and thank you for uh, coming uh, to our event. Uh, my task uh, is essentially a short one, but I'm, I think an important one, which is to give some context uh, to where I think we stand today when it comes to programs and budgets. Um, and why, in turn, why I believe that situation, uh, uh, instead of calling for defense cuts, may in fact uh, uh, necessitate actual defense spending increases. Uh, to start, just a bit of history. Uh, I look out, there are, a lot more, there are a lot more folks who are younger than I am, um, but hopefully the 90s aren't too old. Uh, uh, for, for most of you, uh, when uh, you know, we used to call that the period of the procurement holiday, uh, and it was a procurement holiday. Uh, 1992, uh, the defense budget, uh, the procurement budget for defense uh, matters, uh, was stood at about 60 billion dollars. Uh, from that point on, through most of the rest of the Clinton administration, it dipped uh, towards the levels of about 45 billion, um, and it didn't rise back up to 60 billion for procurement until the very end of the Clinton administration when criticism from the Hill um, and the military itself uh, and the press of an election uh, led the Clinton administration to uh, boost uh, procurement spending. Uh, but remember, uh, uh, for those of us who are old enough to remember, uh, that $60 billion target that they set was actually well below what the Joint Chiefs themselves thought was necessary, which was about $75 billion. Um, and then, in addition, uh, by uh, 3,000, I mean by 2,000, the CBO was estimating that the target should have been uh, close to 90 billion. So, as you can remember, the procurement holiday was a real holiday, and it put us into a, a particular hole when it came to buying things. Uh, it's a hole that we still have not escaped from. In addition, the 90s, of course, were the period in which we cut back on our ground forces by a third. Again, this is a hole that we've yet. yet yet to dig adequately out of. Uh, now, the core defense budget, that is the budget that we have on uh, minus the expenses for the war, of course, has grown. It's grown by about $220 billion over the past decade. Uh, sounds like a lot. It is a lot, uh, except that when you start to pare it down, it turns out not to be as much as you might think. For one thing, when you throw in inflation, uh, both general inflation but also defense-related inflation, you're talking about an increase every year of about 3.5%. Uh, that is not a huge increase, and it's certainly not as large an increase as what was happening on the discretionary and mandatory spending sides. So there is not a new gusher of money. Uh, and, and in addition, if you toss in the rising personnel costs uh, over the past decade and the rising costs um, in operations and maintenance expenses, uh, that, that 220 becomes very small very quick, uh, and it turns out there's not much left over for actually buying the things that the military needs to buy. Now, looking to the future, uh, procurement funding uh, under the Obama's uh, budget projections is expected to climb by a third over the next decade. And, uh, and, by, and over the next five years, we're expecting another 20 percent reduction in R&D uh, expenditures. Uh, and this comes on top of the $300 billion already cut uh, by uh, Secretary Gates from defense programs. Now, compare that $300 billion cut with the $800 billion, nearly $800 billion stimulus package that was uh, offered up in uh, 2009. A stimulus package, by the way, which doesn't seem to have stimulated. Now, putting this all together, the fact of the matter is largely uh, we've had a, a bipartisan agreement about force structure uh, for some time now. The force structure we have currently is by and large the one that the Clinton administration put in, back, put in place back in the, in the 90s. It's one that the, that the Bush administration largely accepted, and on paper at least it's one that the Obama administration has accepted. But the reality is, uh, is that we've never paid for that force structure. Uh, we had the procurement holiday in the 90s, we had defense cuts. Uh, and despite the cost of the wars, the underlying defense budget that the Bush administration has put forward over, the, over, over, over its eight years was an increase, but it wasn't enough to dig us out of this hole. And looking forward, the hole is likely to get bigger. Uh, so the fact of the matter is, in some, the services are not sitting across the river fat and happy, having gorged themselves on a decade of dollars thrown their way. And on the ground, the fact that we continue to use tens of thousands 
upon tens of thousands of reservists and National Guardsmen uh, in our wars in Iraq and Afghanistan is clear evidence that, in fact, uh, the, our ground forces are not um, flush either in, either in men or in materiel. In sum, the military started this decade in a significant hole. That hole has not appreciably shrunk, and the future looks very problematic, especially if calls for new defense cuts uh, uh, come to fruition. Uh, as the independent QDR panel suggested in its report this summer, these trends are not reversed. We face a train wreck, um, and I would suggest that it will be a very, very nasty train wreck. Tom? Yeah. 